adding flowers to your yard and garden is a great way to add beauty and attract pollinators. But it can be tricky in hot climates to know which flowers to grow and which flowers can take the heat of hot summers. In today's video, I'm going to share 10 of my favorite flowers that can take the heat of a hot summer. The key to growing flowers successfully in hot climates is knowing what and when to plant. I'll give you all the information you need about how to grow each flower, whether it grows best from seed or transplant, what conditions it likes. You'll have everything you need to grow flowers successfully all during the hot summer. My first experiences with growing zinnia involved buying six packs of plants at the store, bringing them home, and watching them die. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. And then I learned that zinnia grows best from seed. Its roots get stunted easily in those little six packs that I was buying. So not only is it cheaper to buy seeds, it's better for the plant. If you'd like to start seeds a little bit early indoors and then transplant them into your garden, the key is not letting those transplants get very big. I transplant zinnia seedlings when they're very small to my garden and I've had a lot of success doing it that way. Zinnia is one of those flowers that doesn't mind full sun. It can also tolerate some afternoon shade. Zinnia needs regular water, but its leaves don't like to get wet. That will burn the leaves. You can begin to plant out zinnia as soon as it warms up in the spring. And those blooms are going to last clear through till October or November. When the zinnia is about six or eight inches tall, you want to cut it back just above two sets of leaves, similar to basil. And that's going to encourage branching Rather than one tall spindly plant, you're going to have branching in that zinnia plant. When growing zinnia, be sure to keep it deadheaded. What's deadheading? That means when the bloom begins to fade, when you can tell it's kind of past its prime, cut that zinnia bloom back all the way to the base of the stem. Bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and other beneficial insects love zinnia. Angelonia is sometimes called summer snapdragon, and it's called that for a reason. It loves the heat. I've even planted out a container in the middle of July with Angelonia and it thrived. Not many flowers can say that. Angelonia grows best from transplant. Luckily, transplants are easy to find at most nurseries. It prefers hot, sunny summer locations. Let it dry out a little bit between waterings, but make sure to give it regular deep water to encourage those roots to go nice and deep. Allow one to two feet between plants. Angelonia plants can grow nice and big. Plant Angelonia after it warms up a bit in the spring and it will reward you with blooms all summer long. It grows well in containers. If Angelonia doesn't freeze over the winter, you can cut it back in the spring and it will come back. Another summer favorite is Globe Amaranth. This beautiful plant thrives in the heat. Give it a nice sunny place and it will just take off. It's super easy to grow. It can be planted from transplant or from seeds. Either one grows well. Give each amaranth plant about 6 to 12 inches so it can have enough room to grow well. Every time my mom sees red salvia growing, she reminds me that that was one of my grandma's favorite flowers, and I think that makes me love red salvia even more. Red salvia is easily started from transplant. Add those transplants to your garden, and again, pinch back those first blooms to encourage a nice bushy plant. It can dry out a little bit, but it does need regular water. Red salvia does best with some afternoon shade in the hottest months of the year. You can add red salvia to your garden in the fall and also again in the spring. Red salvia will bloom all summer up until it gets cold. Keep spent blooms cut back to encourage more blooms. I feel like I'm saying this with every flower, but sunflowers really are one of my very favorite heat loving flowers. They're such a fun addition to the garden and they're so easy to grow. If you have children, let them plant the seeds. The nice thing about sunflowers is for sure they do best from seed directly sown in the garden and those seeds are nice and big and so they're really easy for young hands to plant. Once they've sprouted and are a few inches tall, thin to about six inches apart or up to a foot apart for the mammoth sunflowers. The further apart you space those sunflowers, the larger they will be. Plant sunflowers as soon as it warms up in the spring and they can be planted all the way through July here in the low desert. Those blooms are gonna begin in March and keep going all through the fall. Sunflowers attract so much wildlife to the garden. I love seeing the finches, the lovebirds, everybody enjoying those sunflowers. I plant enough for me and enough to share. 
better soil will give you better blooms. If you want big, beautiful blooms and big, beautiful plants, be sure to give them nice soil. Look for multi-branching stems and different varieties. There's so many colors and different types of sunflowers. Find one that you like. Be sure to save seeds from your favorite and replant them year after year. Cosmos is another great heat-loving flower. There's actually two varieties of Cosmos, kind of a pink or white type and Sunset Cosmos, which has more of a yellow or orange bloom. Both can tolerate summers. Orange Cosmos does a little bit better in the hottest times of the year. Cosmos is another one of those plants that I first bought as transplants from the nursery and wondered why they died. Once I learned that Cosmos grows best from seed, it was really easy to add it all around my garden. Each bloom develops into several seeds. Those seeds will drop and reseed year after year. Plant Cosmos in the spring all the way through June, and you're going to have those flowers in your yard from June through November. Cosmos does fine in just average soil. It doesn't need extra fertilizer. Cosmos is a tough plant. It tolerates poor soil, tough conditions, and neglect. Coreopsis is a great accent plant to add to your garden. Coreopsis grows best from seed. Plant Coreopsis seeds in October and November, and again, March through May. You will get blooms from April through September. A tip for growing Coreopsis is to learn how to identify the Coreopsis seedlings, and when you begin to see them sprout, be sure to thin them. Because it reseeds so easily, it will often come back with way too many seedlings. So you want to thin those seedlings out to give the Coreopsis the best chance of growing well. Rutabecchia, or black-eyed Susan as it's commonly called, is a great heat-loving flower that grows easily from seed. The best time to start those seeds is in the fall. October, November, all the way through March, you can scatter those seeds throughout your garden and yard, and you'll notice those seedlings coming up, and it will bloom all throughout the summer. Be sure to thin those seedlings so each plant is able to grow and thrive. Rutabecchia does best with some afternoon shade. Be sure to deadhead often to encourage more blooms. At the end of the season, leave those last blooms on the plant, and then as you pull those plants, kind of sprinkle the seeds around and they will come back. Vinca is a tough plant. It tolerates dry, tough conditions. Vinca does best from transplant. Start planting out Vinca um, in the spring as early as March and you can plant it all the way through July. And those blooms are going to last often year round. Vinca may die back in the frost but it often comes back because once again, those spent blooms drop seeds and you're gonna see vinca popping back up in places where it was planted in your yard. Here are some tips for growing vinca. When you first get your vinca plants, cut them back. Cutting them back encourages a fuller, bushier plant rather than just a tall, spindly plant. Also, look for different colors and different varieties of vinca. There's actually a trailing vinca that is really pretty. It's beautiful on the sides of containers and will just trail down throughout the season. Finca needs regular deep watering. If you forget a watering and you notice that it's kind of withered, give it some water and it will often come back and bounce back. Blue salvia is one of my favorite plants to add to my yard and garden. You can plant blue salvia in the fall and again in the spring. The blooms from blue salvia last almost all year long. Here are a few tips for growing blue salvia. Plant in flower beds and containers and along borders. They're a striking plant and look good almost anywhere they're planted. Blue salvia does best planted from transplant. Let blue salvia dry out a little bit between watering. Cut back the spent blooms on blue salvia to encourage more blooms. If we don't have a really severe frost, if you give it a good hard pruning in the spring, it will come back. Here are a few extra flowers that don't mind summer heat. Four o'clock. Gillardia, Lysianthus, Ratabita, also called Mexican hat, Mexican sunflower, herbs like basil and sage are also great additions to a heat loving garden. Let the basil flower and pollinators love it. There you have it, my 10 favorite flowers that grow well in hot summers. Hopefully you found one or two that you can add to your garden. Thank you so much for watching.